Red Eye Radio. How would you feel if you had practiced medicine in Canada, then you come down to the United States and, oh my goodness, you, you run smack dab into Obamacare? Dr. Walter Gammon is a partner in practicing medicine at Healthcare Associates and Executive Medicine in, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, co author of Stay Young 10 Proven Steps to Ultimate Health. Received his medical degree from the University of Manitoba. Moved to Texas in the 1980s because, well, Dr. Gammon says you wanted the freedom that American <laughs> doctors were given to practice their craft without government involvement or dictation. And, you know, you've been named one of the best doctors in Texas, one of the top docs in Dallas, and a health care hero in Fort Worth. You've done pretty well, but uh, have you really escaped the government? <laughs> Well, not really, if you can imagine. Good morning to you, by well, the way. Well, good morning. Good to have you on Red Eye Radio. So tell us tell us your, your experience with American medicine and how we got to this point where Obamacare is now reshaping everything. Well, you know, uh, something that gets uh, lost in all this discussion is the uh, biggest a government program in the world in health care is American Medicare. So, you know, uh, we, we've already had government interference for a long time, and now with Obamacare, it's, uh, despite maybe the best intentions of some politicians, as everyone can see, it's just a complete debacle. Well, it, it certainly is a debacle, and the, you know, President Obama was saying, oh, this is going to be a private plan. It's going through the private insurance companies. But they are pulling their hair out because all the features that they thought was going, you know, were going to enable them to still operate as private companies have one by one been changed by President Obama. The employer mandate, the individual mandate, then insurance companies been told, being told, well, Go ahead and provide benefits, even though you still haven't been paid by most people. Half the people on Obamacare haven't paid their premiums yet. Kathleen Sebelius says, go ahead and pay them. And by the way, resurrect these partial plans. All of their economic projections have been changed, and a lot of people have been excused from buying it. And there's a lot of talk behind the scenes that, we're actually building up toward a bailout of the health care insurance companies. This is not the way the program was sold. No, not at all. And as we all know, President Obama said, if you like your doctor, you could keep it. That was, that was doomed. That was impossible, the way this is all structured. You know, one way to look at it, this is from the uh, bottom up. The government, as you know, um, uh, expanded the Medicaid program dramatically. But as uh, a study out of Washington State showed, I believe yesterday, uh, the Medicaid participants uh, who, uh, you know, just got into Medicaid, they can't find doctors because the reimbursement from Medicaid is so poor, they, went, they wind up still using the hospital emergency rooms, in fact, more than ever before. So that's just becoming a very costly event for everyone. Well, now you move up to the middle class. So, you know, poor John Doe, who hasn't had health insurance before because he had a pre-existing condition, and I think it's a good idea to get rid of the pre-existing condition clause, but now he gets insurance. He's paying a high premium. He's got a high deductible. And what's happening is the insurance companies now are giving a very narrow spectrum of doctors to see. And the health insurance companies typically are picking out the doctors that spend the least money. Now, you know, cost-effective medicine doesn't mean cheap medicine. It means spending the money wisely. But sometimes that's going to cost money. And so if the health insurance companies are being underfunded in all this because, you know, the young are not signing up, the young and the healthy are not signing up, you've got all the high risk, the expensive patients, then this is doomed to failure. And you're exactly right. It could lead to a bailout uh, in the future. Absolutely. Most people are totally unaware of the, the price controls that are created by Obamacare. In fact, most people are unaware of, of the price controls that have been created by the federal government in so many different aspects of, of medicine. 
Uh, you referred to it with uh, Medicaid and, and Medicare. Uh, most people don't realize how much the government has done that regulates the price of medicine, and that means that some physicians say, I don't want to play that game. That's right. That's right. So a lot of physicians don't take Medicaid, for example, uh, because they would actually lose money. The cost of doing business to see a Medicaid patient would be more than the reimbursement. You know, a lot of doctors are dedicated and saying, well, I don't mind breaking even, but I don't want to lose money. And something similar could happen on these Obamacare plans. But, you know, this isn't the first time the government has pulled this. I mean, forever, Medicare has been funded much less than commercial insurance, and the government admits that they expect this to be covered by the people with commercial insurance. In other words, the healthier young people have commercial insurance. They expect, for example, hospitals to make up the difference in what they're losing on Medicare from the commercial insurance. Well, that's already a type of socialized medicine. So the government never intended to fund Medicare properly because they want it subsidized by everyone else. So this mentality has been there all along. And if people ever wonder, you know, why does a hospital charge, I'll just pick a figure out of the air, you know, $100 for an aspirin, it's because it's giving free aspirin to so many other people. So those who are paying, they charge you extra. That's right. That's absolutely correct. So what, what, what's going to happen? How many people are going to find out that their choice of doctors is so restricted or perhaps even non-existent under Obamacare, and what will they do when they, when they learn that? Well, there's going to be a lot of anger in the population, and there's going to be one of two things that happen. Uh, either the population is going to demand that the government overhaul Obamacare and fund it properly so they can see the doctors they want to and they can get the care they want to, or the ultra-left is going to say, look, this is an example of health insurance companies and the government can't work together. Let's go to a single-payer system like in Canada, and then we'll be really in the, in the soup on that case. Now, do you... Do you have a projection of where will the medical community be? I know there's a lot, there's a lot of physicians that are upset that, uh, you know, the American Medical Association and others in the medical community played ball uh, with the administration uh, when they wanted it to be resisted. Where did you fall on that scale? Well, I think the problem there is uh, most doctors and myself until lately, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know what the reimbursement was. This was all sort of kept secret and under wraps. So no one really knew what the situation was. As these people start hitting the marketplace and the reimbursement rates come to light, there's going to be a tremendous backlash, and a lot of doctors uh, might start dropping these plans because the funding is so poor. Where I see the real uh, Waterloo on this is at the end of 2014 when there's been a year of data, the insurance companies have lost money, and they up the premiums even more. I think that's when the, the, the tornadoes are going to hit and people are going to hit the roof. We're, we're visiting with Dr. Walter Gammon, a medical practitioner, a co-author of Stay Young, 10 Proven Steps to Ultimate Health. Do you have advice for people when they're trying to sort through the confusion and trying to find reliable information about what in the world is going on and how do they make decisions in this environment? Well, <laughs> that's the problem. The information is not forthcoming. It's very difficult to find. Um, if people can uh, afford a uh, really big deductible and lower premiums, that's the way to go. But, of course, a lot of people can't afford, for example, a $5,000 deductible. But, you know, to protect themselves in the short run, if they can afford the deductible, that's the way to go. Uh, outside of that, uh, a lot of people are just basically screwed. I mean, you know, they have the pre-existing condition and thrilled to have any insurance so they'll get it, they'll be happy, but then once they start trying to use it, there, there may be a lot of problems. Okay, well, we're going to find out as time progresses. And Dr. Gammon, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning on Red Eye Radio. Uh, Dr. Walter Gammon practices medicine in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, co-author of Stay Young, 10 Proven Steps to Ultimate Health. It's Red Eye Radio. 
We want to know your experience with Obamacare, for that matter, your anticipation of what's going to be happening in 2014 with your health and your family's health. 866-907-3339. I'm Ernest Iztook. It's Red Eye Radio. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio anytime. Toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. 866-907-3339. 